Hello everyone, this is Darwell20, and welcome to episode 94. Holy cow, it's getting close to 100, isn't it? Uh, just taught my AA system here how to make some smooth stone out of the stone essence, which I added to my mystical agriculture farm, because I'm a cool guy like that. And you might know I have a bunch of factory blocks in my inventory. What could that be about? What does Dyer like to build with factory blocks? Generally speaking, uh, you know, stuff and things. Generally speaking, uh, what we're talking about building with factory blocks is a nuclear craft area. I want to play with nuclear craft. Um, I did. We definitely played with nuclear craft in a previous series, right? But I don't think we ever played with salt reactors. And I'd, I'd be interested in learning about those and playing with them a little bit. So we'll probably do some basic nuclear craft. We'll probably do some uh, fusion-based stuff. And I'd also love to check out salt reactors. Now, in fairness, my understanding of them is they're very complicated and hard to set up, but they don't necessarily have the best RF output, but I might be wrong about that. I don't know. Um, so it's possible that what we're going to create here is not going to be particularly powerful in terms of RS generation when we come to the talk about the salt ones, but we'll have fun creating the uh, regular nuclear craft guys, and we'll have fun creating uh, some of the other cool stuff like along the lines of uh, fusion reaction, which will definitely get us lots of power. Speaking of fusion reactor, our wildly overpowered reactor is just doing great over here, I believe, right? Or not. Okay, cool. You're out of... Do what now? Okay, maybe I lied. Maybe it's not doing great. So we have plenty of deuterium, plenty of tritium. Our injection rate's zero? That's weird. Why did that happen? Why did our injection rate become zero? I did update the pack. I don't know if that makes a difference. I did update the pack between episodes. So, but I've, I've, I've in more than one instance logged in here and found the injection rate at zero. So I don't know if this thing, I have no idea. I don't know. I don't have an answer to you as to why that's a, that's a thing that happened, right? Do I really have a home waypoint from like episode one that's not accurate? I don't even know. So I did update the pack between episodes. So like a few config things changed and probably a few things were lost, but I mean, you know, pack updates are pack updates. It usually goes pretty well and I didn't run into any problems with it. So that's always nice. Um, but yeah, today's episode, let's get started with nuclear craft. So what I'm gonna do is, number one, pick a location for nuclear craft. Seems like a smart enough idea to me. Number two, we're gonna set up a quantum bridge between the two uh, and throw a wireless uh, access point out there so I can have wireless access to it. Number three, I wanna point out that there is a wireless, there's a creative wireless crafting terminal. Hmm. Uh, and, 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 and that comes from a quest. Huh, what quest would that be? Um, there's there's definitely some kind of quest. It's tricky to figure out, like, I believe. It looks like it costs 25,000 uh, coins. Now, unfortunately, uh, the quest is one of the unlockable quests. It's down here. I figured it out. Unlocked from completing the introduction chapter. So complete all the quests in the introduction chapter, and you get access to a creative wireless crafting terminal. Now, my question is, does Creative Wireless Crafting Terminal have unlimited range? Hmm, said the villager. Hmm, I don't know the answer, said Direwolf. Uh, I could probably test that in a test world at some point, and maybe I should before I go through the effort of completing all these quests, because it's the introduction chapter, you might think, oh, they'll be easy, but then you notice that I've only completed about 24% of the quests available to me at this point, so that's fun. Uh, and it looks like we have a few uh, hand-ins that we can do on account of the fact... Oh, nifty, 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 nifty. Uh, on account of the fact that in upgrading our pack, it looks like some of the quests uh, have gone ahead and changed there. So that's cool. Tasks. What was that? Storage upgrade diamond. Oh, I think I did actually get that, you know, before. Uh, Thalm crafty quests I probably never handed in. There's probably a ton of quests that I never handed in, to be fair. So, good times, good times all around. Put all this junk away. Factory blocks, circuit, that's what I want. Factory blocks, circuit, is the factory block I've chosen uh, to go with for the floorboards of our nuclear craft area. So let's do this, let's get a, let's get a receiver, right? Uh, so that we can teleport back and forth. Now, in, in other news and fairness, I wonder, I wonder, I wonder, I wonder, I wonder. Uh, what's that mod? Waystones. Do waystones require experience to teleport? I don't even know. I wonder what the config option of these is. I mean, because waystones are kind of a cool teleporty mechanic, right? Um, they are. They are a cool mechanic for teleportation. 
They definitely are. I'd be curious to see... Quest complete waystone. Nice. I'd be curious to see... Like, how about here, right? Home base. We do like them. Nice. So it is experience-based. Not a huge amount of experience required to teleport, and to be fair, we have a lot of experience. So it's not like experience is a rare resource for me. Um, it's just one of those things that, like, isn't always automatically available, right? There's going to come a point in five minutes, probably, where I'm going to click that waystone and go to teleport, and now I don't have enough experience, and I'm going to be annoyed by that. <laughs> what are you going to do? But they're also still cool. Now, the other thing is that there's portal gun here, right? Uh, so we could totally portal gun it up. That would maybe be neat. I mean, I never did get around to making one of these. And Portal Guns, as we know, is a cool mod. Super, super spiffy cool. Um, and, and we could totally buy one in the shop with just 6,500 coins. And that would be super easy. Maybe we should do that real quick. Real quick. Just because they're fun. Sure. Hey, look, I got a Portal Gun. Quest complete. Portal Gun. Uh, now, 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 I don't actually know the truth of this, but is see-through portals a thing? It is. It's definitely a little FPS punchy. Oh yeah, look at that. Look at that FPS hurt. Lots of, uh, well, yeah, no. Yeah, a little bit of an FPS dip when you use the portal gun, which ain't the end of the world, to be fair, right? But, you know, we, we definitely see some lag when we activate the portals, which is fair enough. Maybe play with that. But let's use, let's use the waystone for now. Uh, and I could always add waystones to, like, my Thorncraft area and other stuff. I think in the last series I disabled the experience cost, but, yeah. So where should we go set up our nuclear area? Um, and here's, here's the deal with the nuclear area, as you guys may or may not recall. In doing nuclear craft stuff, we're going to have radiation. And I'm assuming radiation is enabled in this pack. Pretty sure it is, because I think I ran into it at one point. Uh, in doing that, we will absolutely have a little bit uh, of pain, as it were, uh, with the chunk, right? So, like, the area will become radiated, and that's going to be a bad time for everyone. So we want to make sure that whatever we're doing, we're doing it in such a way that uh, it's cool. And it will uh, be far enough away from my base that we don't run into any problems. So let's just, like, max this dude out. Actually, I can only do eight. That's right. And then a depth of one. Sounds like a cool idea. And let's turn off... That seems cool. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's what's up. I don't have an exact plan for what I want to do here. All I know is I want to clear out a large area of land. Is that so much to ask? I would hope not, because it's what I'm doing. Look at that cool snake thing. What's that? What is that snake, huh? And we're going to we're gonna fill in. What is that thing? What mod is that even from? What are you? Snake from Bewitchment. That's cool. I, I, how long have we been playing this pack and we've never seen snakes from Bewitchment before? What is that all about? I'm just saying. Whoops. Undo. Alright, let me clear out some more terrain and we will be back in a minute. Alright, pretty well cleared up. Like, this will kind of be the foundation of our, of our area here. I'm kind of spitballing this a little bit. Nuclear area. Boom. Now, there's a couple other places that I could teleport to. And I'm going to pick up... Can I break the waystone? I thought I could totally break the waystone. Can't I break the waystone? Can I not break a world gen waystone? I thought I could. I feel like that's how I got my waystones in the last series. Is it like a shift right click? Huh. That is fascinating. I don't want you to exist, sir. Like, I'm straight up ready to void you. But, I mean, the fact that you have a name means you probably have NBT data, which means that you probably can't be voided because you're a tile entity. Ugh, how do I get rid of this thing? That would be nice to do, but I can't, apparently. Oh, well. To home, James. 
let's do the thing. So, got that mostly cleared out. The other thing I wouldn't mind, can we do a quick Horn of the Wild? That would be cool for clearing out some of the flattened area that we want to clear out a little bit of. We just need seeds or tall grass it is in a mana pool. Definitely one of my favorite modded items is the Horn of the Wild. I mean, I live in a desert, so I haven't needed a lot this series, but generally speaking, super useful. It gets rid of all that tall grass in a big old area, and it is pretty much the bee's knees. So what we're gonna have here is a little bit of that. I mean, how can you not appreciate what is the best lawnmower in the game? Right? It's, it's pretty much the best. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is go surface mode with fuzzy enabled. We're gonna grab one of these blocks so we can copy it. And now we are ready to rock and roll. So let's bump this range up as much as we can. Uh, and I'm thinking we'll start with surface mode and then we'll expand it with horizontal wall mode. And that should be pretty cool. And let's not do build on top of. Yes, that's what we want. Perfect. And then we can expand this dude out nice and easily. Now I might need more of these blocks obviously pretty quickly, but I wanna have just a nice big foundation, see how much more space we need. And to be fair, we probably don't need all these blocks. So I probably could have done without. Um, Cause I don't actually need these here. Let's start here-ish, how's that sound? Okay, back in a minute when we've got more foundation placed. Yeah, see, I need more. All right, that's, I'm gonna call pretty cool, right? Not a bad little setup we got here. Should be good. Uh, should be a nice start to, and hopefully a good visual. I don't know if I actually like that. That as big of an area as that is, I don't know if I love it. I might want to exchange or that. How do we feel about that? Should we try, should we try something a little bit less because that was factory circuit blocks what else we got metal blocks eh, let me just play with this a little bit do we feel this looks a little bit cooler i kind of like that a little bit more right yeah let's go let's go that route be right back i changed my mind again this is this is this is what people who build do right this is what they do they try things and they see how they like it and then they okay we're gonna we're gonna keep that i mean it still looks all weird in a wall like i don't like the looks weird maybe this one yeah, this looks a little bit better, right? I guess. I don't know. I'm not good at this stuff. You guys know I'm not. I'm trying. I'm like legit trying, but yeah. Just want something that's going to look good over a long distance, right? Because we got a big area we're going to work in here. Because we're probably going to need quite a little bit of space, right? We're going to need area for our nuclear stuff. We're going to need area for our uh, fusion stuff. And if we're going to get into the salt reactors too, just to check them out, we're going to need an area for that. Cool. Um, now, now we've definitely done in the past uh, a basic nuclear half reactor. So I think the first step we're going to do is have a decent nuclear reactor uh, that's going to be able to burn through some of our initial uh, nu nuclear fuel. And we'll kind of go from there, right? So let me bring up a reactor design and see what we can come up with. All right, so what I've gone is Googled to remember because we've done this a little bit ago in MC Eternal, but I kind of forgot like the exact fuel progression, but that's why Google exists because there's good posts on Reddit and other places where you can go find uh, the, the progression levels for, for what we're talking about doing here, right? So what we want to do is get uranium fuels and there's a bunch of different types of nuclear fuels that we can use in our reactors high level just to get you guys up to speed if anybody's never seen nuclear craft before there are many 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 types of fuel in nuclear craft there are this many fuels so all these circles here are fuels there's that many so there's a lot of them there's a lot of different kinds of fuels all with different attributes most of the attributes are around how long the fuel lasts which is your base processing time how much power you get per tick uh, and the amount of heat that the fuel produces in your reactor. And when we build the reactors, what we want to care about is basically, you know, the amount of RF you get per fuel pile is re relative to basically your processing time, 
how long the fuel lasts, and the power gen, how much RF per tick. You combine those two numbers and you get how much RF you get out of the entire fuel pellet, right? It also produces heat, uh, and different, uh, different fuels produce different levels of heat. The reactors are able to dissipate heat either passively, which means they just passively give off heat and they're good, or actively, which means you have to pump some kind of fluid into the reactor to cool it off, to, to keep it cool enough so that it doesn't explode. If you don't cool off a reactor, unlike the mechanism one, bad things do happen, and we don't want to let that happen. So we're going to build reactors that are going to be safe, uh, and, and the reactors are multi-block structures with a bunch of different blocks inside, and the different blocks have different attributes to cool reactors uh, and process the fuel. And you can adjust things like how quickly you're processing the fuel. So some blocks inside a multi-block will make the fuel process quicker, but therefore generate more heat. Other blocks will cool off the reactor, but then it takes longer to process the fuel. What we're after is uh, a, a nice reactor that'll process our fuel quickly so that we can get a lot of power out of it very fast. But also, once we process fuel, for example, uranium-235, this is LEU, low energy uranium-235. Um, and that's why I remember it. I think the E might stand for something else technically, but there's high energy and low energy for the most part. Low energy means it doesn't give off a lot of energy, but generally it's a little bit uh, lower on the heat gen. So you can see 50 there. Higher fuels might have more RF a tick, but also higher heat gens, right? Um, basically what you do is you process it uh, by running it through a reactor. It'll generate power. When it's done, you get depleted version of that fuel, which you can process and get other types of uh, isotopes. So in this case, you'll get neptunium and plutonium as a byproduct of this. So generally speaking, the main fuel that you can get um, from world gen is LEU, which is low energy uranium. And there's another one uh, that we might process. Uh, I think, I forget one of these guys that outputs it. It's like a thorium or something like that fuel. I kind of forget but we'll figure it out as we go along. But generally speaking, there's only a couple fuel types you have access to from world gen nuclear craft um, ores, right? Uranium ore. But once you burn it in a reactor, you get other types of fissionable material that you can craft into another type. So we can get high energy plutonium. And when we're done processing that, uh, we'll wind up getting HEP fuel, high energy plutonium. And that'll break down into like americium and curium uh, and americium and curium are made to make HECM, high energy curium, uh, right? So that's curium isotopes and oxide. So basically, you burn this one and you get the stuff to make this one. And then you burn this one and you get the stuff to make this one. And then you burn this one and you get the stuff to make this one. And you go down the line. And it's a lot of fun to set up. And that's what we're going to play with today. Um, the other thing you might get, I forget, there's absolutely another one that I remember us needing to burn. And I'm not seeing it here. I need to remember what it is. Um, but it's one of the world gen dudes. Uh, what ores are available here? Copper, tin, lead, thorium. I want to say it's thorium, right? Don't we want to burn thorium? It's like TBU fuel or something. Yeah, thorium. Uh, when when you process it in some kind of smelter, you get thorium ingots, which uh, we can... I think it's TBU fuel is what we get, right? Yeah, TBU fuel. I remember us needing to process this for some reason. What do we get out of this when we... When we fission it, depleted TBU fuel turns into more uranium and neptunium. Okay, so that might that might play a role. I think I think this gives me more of another type of uranium. I forget. I don't know. There's a lot of there's a lot of complexity to this mod, which is what makes me enjoy it. Right? Like I I have fun like relearning it because there's so much complexity. It's like kind of hard to become a master at this short of doing it a bunch of times. And I'm getting pretty good at it, but it's still like, I don't remember a lot of things, right? Oh, I remember now. Uh, so when we process our 235 fuel, we only get 238 as an output. Okay, that's cool. And if we want 233, we need uranium 233, which the tiny clumps of only come from depleted TDU fuel. Right. That's where you get uranium-233 from. Depleted TBU fuel. Okay. That's why. I knew we needed TBU fuel for something. I remember needing that. And now it comes back to me. Sweet. So let's pop back to our home base and start looking at a reactor build that we're going to go through. Cool? So there's three types of blocks that we need to form a fission controller. Um, 
Type one is the outer casing. So you're gonna need a controller, you're gonna need ports to pipe in and out items and also get energy out. And then we also need the outer casings uh, so we can so we can activate it from the outside. And there's also transparent fission reactor casings, which is cool. Um, yeah, I like it. Let's do the transparent this time because we didn't do transparent last time, right? So I think that might be fun. So I'm gonna teach you how to make all these cool things. Um, now there's a lot of crafting that might be in there, but I think we already did advanced plates, right? did do advanced plates cool magnesium diborides i don't think we did yet but that's okay we'll figure out what aspects of these we need uh we do have the machine chassis taught we do have the machine chassis taught good job past direwolf 20 that is cool we'll get the nuclear furnace ready to go uh and then the overall reactor and we might need to and i might wind up doing this between episodes um but i might need to get some more interface is going because we are very quickly uh, gonna run out of things so fission controller ready cool you need to know how to make furnaces and magnesium diboride really you don't know how to make a furnace chief really it's funny the things that you don't get around to automating right like how do I not already know how to make furnaces usually that's like the first thing that we teach oi All right, so you need magnesium diboride alloys, uh, which will be an alloy smeltery recipe between magnesium and boron. Okay, that seems easy enough. Are you cool? Yes, you're cool. Uh, so an alloy smeltery recipe. Now, do we have magnesium and boron? That's a good question. We have a little bit of magnesium. And we have a little bit of boron. So you know what that tells me? Tells me we need some seeds. That's what that tells me. We need some seeds. Magnesium seeds. Getting there. Thank you. So these are going to be a to do list item for us, right? So we'll start with the boron. We'll add you over here, chief. Bada bing, bada boom. And are you all behaving yourselves? False, false. I've been having a little bit of a weird issue with this and I don't know what caused it all of a sudden. But at some point, somewhere along the line, this thing started acting funny. And occasionally it's replacing seeds when it shouldn't. Like it's replacing seeds in, in, a, in a weird way when they shouldn't be getting replaced. So I don't know what's up with that. It'd be a little bit weird, but we'll uh, have to keep an eye on it. See what's up. So anyway, let me get these guys grown and we'll be right back. All right, so it's well on its way. We'll see what happens. It's been a little bit weird lately. I don't know what's up with the automation over there. Nothing changed. I never touched anything, but out of the blue, it just decided, you know what, Direwolf? I'm gonna stop being funny. Sometimes it'll like replace the seed when it doesn't. Like it'll sometimes like replace the nine with a seven and that absolutely shouldn't happen. Uh, so at some point I'll troubleshoot that off camera and figure out if I can wind that up. I don't know, we'll find out. Anyway, uh, we now know that and we need to find a, an alloy smelter that isn't too busy. Isn't too busy uh, to, to handle this for me. So maybe what we should do is just set up a new alloy smelter. Does that sound like a terrible plan? You've got what, four channels in use? Yeah, we could totally do a new alloy smelter, right? Because you know we're gonna need a lot of alloy smelting at some point. And I should really look into the enhanced alloy smelter just to see what that's all about. Wow, that's a lot of things I don't have. Um, let's come back after I craft a lot. All right, so that should be cool now. So now if I asked for a fission controller, you should have no problem whipping that up. Nice, beautiful. Love, 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 love when things just go as smoothly as they should. Very cool. All right, now, so we've got that. Uh, let's also teach you how to make fission reactor casings, which shouldn't be too bad. And fission ports just for funds. And hopefully neither of those are too hard to auto craft. And then we need to start looking at the innards of nuclear craft stuff. And that's where I think we're gonna have to have a problem because we're definitely running out of auto crafting. We're gonna need another one of those auto crafting column dudes in our basement to, to manage that for us, right? 
let's just get 100, whatever, it's fine. You know, and uh, like, I don't know, 10 of these? Seems like a good number. Copper solenoids, you don't yet know. Okay, no worries. No worries, we can teach that one relatively easily, I think. Yeah, it's just copper and iron. Easy peasy. But yeah, the inner coolant bits is where we're going to have a problem, for sure. Not a problem. Okay, cool. Uh, let's see now. So those are the basics. Let's look at coolants. Um, so what I want to do is come up with what reactor I want to run through. So let me look at uh, how I can burn LEU-235 in a nice, fast way. All right, so I've got a decent breeder design. Um, now, there's there's a third-party tool. I'm not going to load it up today because I'm just not in a position to, to put that in the recording here, but um, we'll show it to you probably next stream or, or next, uh, next recording session. Um, but the cool thing is this tool can copy the building gadgets code needed so that we can paste this right into the game. So it's like a, it's, if you saw my uh, MC Eternal series, you know what I'm talking about. But this is the innards of the reactor that we're going to go with. This is going to handle LEU 235, 233, and TBU fuels safely. And it'll also process, process them all pretty quickly. Uh, so that's going to be an important thing for us. Um, now, what we're going to need is just lapis coolers, and that's it. That's it. We only need lapis coolers. Um, and then the only other thing we need uh, are fuel cells. So that'll be cool. So let's teach you fuel cells from nuclear craft. What are they called? Are they called just cell? There it is, reactor cell. That's what they're called. Uh, and then lapis coolers is what we're gonna want. So you're just gonna need to be that with a passive cooler in the middle, an empty cooler. And hopefully we know how to make all these things, right? Now we're one little guy short. So I'm gonna borrow my cobblestone crafting guy for a minute because we don't necessarily need him at the moment and we should be able to make this. Now we're going to need 63 fuel cells and 32 lapis coolers, right? We are short lapis blocks. You know why? I don't have lapis seeds, do I? I should totally do that. I should totally have lapis seeds. I should totally have lapis seeds. Tier four crafting seed, please. That's another to-do item. All right, so you seem to be behaving over here at least, so I'm very happy about that. There you are. All right. Um, so we definitely need to get the lapis going. That's going to be pretty close to what we want to do. You know, I've been sitting here watering for a few minutes, and that weirdness that I described earlier has not happened again. All I did was take a lot of my uh, take a lot of these things out for a few minutes and put them back in. So I, I don't know. I think it might just be like a little bit of a weird edge case oddness. But yeah, it's definitely behaving better now. So that's cool, at least. All right, finally, level 30 seeds. Cool. Everybody good? Level 30? Good. All right, I want to get Lapis next, because I really want to build the reactor before we wrap up the episode here, so that's kind of the plan. And then we'll see what happens. So these should be level 30 seeds. Good. You can go there. You can get grown. You can spread. And let's get this process started, and then I'm going to go plant my seeds. Cool? Hooray! Level 30 lapis seeds. That's what's up. All cleaned? Looks good to me. All right, let me get these guys planted now. All right, lapis production up and running. Booyah. That looks cool. Just want to make sure that my lapis drawer is big enough and voidy enough. He big, he ain't voidy. No, he ain't either. We'll do both. Uh, emerald drawer upgrade, please. That should be cool, and that should be cool. That way he can store lots of lapis and also void when the time comes. Cool. All right, 
may or may not have produced enough lapis over here. And boron, for that matter. To kickstart what I want to make. Because I'd really love to just get this thing placed. And the next episode we can look at doing more with it, right? That would be super cool. We'll find out. Not too bad. Alright, so now can I make my 32 lapis coolers? Yeah, I can. Love it. Love it. All right, cool. And then uh, reactor cells for this guy, we're going to need... And I don't know if this is, like, the best efficient way. I think I came up with this one. 63. So we're short on some lithium. Looks like we got another seed to build play with. So lithium ingots... Can you come from that lithium dust that we're producing? Like, can you turn into lithium ingots in somehow, shape, or form? You can redstone furnace into lithium ingots. Yes, you can. Well, that's a thing. So I don't know if we need to seed those, right? Like, we could totally just say, like, hey, furnace crafting recipe? And that's the lithium that we're producing from our stuff, right? So, I mean, just saying, elite smelting factory, you could have that, right? And then we could do reactor cells, no problem. Missing lithium dust. Get our lithium dust. Hopefully you are or dictionary in such a way that this works. Yes, we'll find out. Oh yeah, it's working. Nice. All right. And go, reactor cells. Have fun. All right, cooking right along. Getting there. You're making some steel. I've really got to look into those enhanced alloy smelters because they're just a smidge slow. All right, so what we should be seeing here, if we hold shift, we need 32 lapis coolers and 63 reactor cells. We should be coming right in on that number right now. And the lapis coolers, and that should mean that you're happy with what I got for you. So that cool. We're gonna pop over, meh, daytime it. Let's totally daytime it. And I should do a feral flare or something so that I can op operate over there at nighttime without any concern about mobs or anything like that. But, you know, things will happen over time. So this will be our first reactor setup, right? And we're gonna pop him like right here-ish in the, in the, in the world. Uh, and then we're gonna need to go along with that uh, a bunch of reactor dudes that I've kind of forgotten to get. I'm hoping the 100 fission reactor casings that I got was enough. Let's kick off another couple hundred of those. You know, just to be safe. Splitting the atom achievement get. Hooray! Uh, so back to nuclear area. And what we're going to do... Um, now this one has a lot of air pockets in it. So it's not a great example of doing... Surface mode. But if we wanted to, we could totally... But you don't have to hit the corners. That's a big uh, big note for you guys. So do you have uh, surface mode? Yes. But you want to be not fuzzy and place on top. There you go. Cool. See, I could do that, but it because there's gaps, it doesn't work out super well. So the best way to do surface mode with this guy would probably be either that or to place, um, you know, what you could do is a vertical wall uh, and make it, I think. That should be cool. Yeah, see? How neat is that? Now, the, the other thing is we do need um, the bottom and the top to be covered as well. Uh, so let's get some more of those fission reactor casings, which are taking their sweet time, aren't they? What's, uh, what's the hold up, kids? Dyer's got to wrap this episode up sooner than later. There you go. You should have some nuclear craft speed upgrades in you. If we're being honest, that is a thing we should do. I think 50 is about what we're going to need. So that should be cool. Now we're about to reach the point where Dyer's going to get annoyed that he made this thing cost experience. But it's okay. OK, 
Okay, that looks cool. Yeah, I'm okay with this. Yeah, that'll do. That'll do nicely. Now, did I accidentally eat some of these things? I did. So let's do this. Um, we're going to undo you. And then we're going to do these guys. That should be cool. And then we can put you back here-ish. Cool. Now, if memory serves me correctly, all I gotta do is stick a fission controller on any corner here and we should be good. And replace these guys that we broke earlier with our five by five digging. And you should be cool. Nice, 63 fuel cells, negative 3,840 uh, heat per tick because that's the cooling rate of this guy. Next episode, we will come back and play a little bit further with nuclear craft. Definitely a fun mod to play with. And we'll we'll get into some more of like the, the, the different ways you can build reactors and the different heat levels and all that good stuff. But for now, let's wrap it up point, I'm sorry to say. So that was my sign off. Hope you enjoyed the episode for now. Take it easy.